Hi, Dr. Stu. Hey, Stu, great to see you. What have we got here? A variety of cheeses, because there is some serious science behind getting that perfect cheese. First, we're assessing meltability. Not every cheese melts, and so one of the most important factors is how acidic the cheese is. And we measure that with the pH. And so okay. we're going to test that now with these different cheeses. We're measuring the pH levels of some popular varieties. We'll start at this end with blue cheese, but Stilton. One of my favourites, stinky cheese. The stinkier, the better. In we go. A low number is very acid, a higher number is more alkaline. What we're looking for is a pH of between 5 and 5.9. Ideally, in the middle, 5.3 is the sweet spot. So what you can see already is that it's a much higher number. 6.27 already. And that means that it's less acidic. Low acidity tells us about the protein network of the Stilton. It's like this ball of elastic bands that you can't get apart because the proteins are too tightly bound together. So that when you melt it, mm -hmm. they don't really have that lovely, soft, melty, stringy effect. They just stay like this. Next up, crumbly feta. In we go. So it's landed at 4.26. What does yes. that mean? Well, the feta is too acidic. High acidity makes the protein network too loose. So when you melt it... It'll actually burn rather than melt. Third up is mozzarella. Probe that cheese. Bang in the middle between 5 and 5.9. It's in the melting zone. So the proteins in the mozzarella, they're just in that sweet spot where they can melt beautifully because it has got the perfect acidity. Yes, but there's another reason that makes mozzarella so good for pizza, and that is the stringiness. Yes. And it's the way in which it's made. Mozzarella is kneaded, just like pizza dough, which gives it extra stretchability. And that's why it has the long, lovely, mm. cheesy stringiness. Mm -hmm. So to make our ultimate pizza, mm -hmm. feta and blue cheese are out. Out. So Mozzarella is in. Yes. Are there any other cheeses we should try? Yes, there are other cheeses that are in the melting zone. Uh, we've got here some cheddar and we've got some gruyere. They're all between 5 and 5.9, but the only way to find out which is best is to do some experiments. And you're going to hate this. We're going to have to make some pizza. Yes! We're topping identical plain tomato bases with our three cheeses. There we go. After 10 minutes cooking, there are clear visual differences. All right. They look absolutely gorgeous. There we go. Thank you, thank you. So here we've got our lovely pizzas, Gruyere, cheddar and mozzarella. So I want to point out to you something with the cheddar. You can see here that you've got oily patches. And what's happened there is that the fat has separated out as this oil. So that's not ideal. Cheddar's high fat content makes it look unappealing. Gruyere looks more promising. If we look here at the Gruyere, you can see there's blistering if you look around the mm. edges. And that's because there's quite a lot of moisture in Gruyere. Yeah. And so as it heats up, the water turns to steam and it comes up as these, as these bubbles, this blistering that we see. When the bubbles burst, then you get a rough surface and that helps the browning. So why do we want the browning effect? That's where all the flavour is. That's where the magical reaction is happening. But mozzarella is the clear winner. If we go to the mozzarella, this has even more moisture in it and so you've got more of this bubbling effect. So the mozzarella is good because it browns faster without separating into oily pools. You've got it. Mozzarella is the winner. Mm, it's got my vote. Science confirms tradition. Great meltability and beautiful browning make mozzarella the perfect pizza cheese. <laughs>